Okay, so we're going to talk about measures of central tendency. So let's analyze this phrase here, central tendency. This is referring to the center of data sets, the center of the distributions, the tendency for data to gravitate towards some center. So in some distributions, like a bell curve, there's a clearly defined center. There's a big bulge in the center of the curve where all the data is clustering around, and very few data points get away from that center. And then you kind of think of almost like gravitational pull towards the center. If you think about um, some other distributions, perhaps they're more diffuse and more spread out, and there's not as much of a clearly defined strong center. But, um, so we want to measure the center, and the reason why we want to do this is it tells us where the data set is located. Very simple thing, right? You know, where, are, where are, say, male heights located typically? Or males, if you'd never met a male human being before, of course that'd be very peculiar, but you know, imagine hypothetically you'd never seen a male human being before, you'd wonder well, where are their heights typically located? And so when we get towards measuring the center, we're trying to think of you know, what's typical for that group and where is it located on the number line? The set of numbers that would encapsulate all the measurements of male heights, where would they be located on the number line? Are they going to be up in the hundreds, down in the 60s, down in the tens? So that's our question. Okay. So we want to measure the center clearly. And how can we do that? Well, I've listed three different numerical measures of the center on the board here. Mean is the most popular one, and you know this commonly is the average. And you know we calculate that by adding up all the numbers and then dividing by the number of values you started with. The mean is actually um, the sort of centroid, or the center of mass for the data set, basically. So like this pen, if I can find the sweet spot where, am I, uh, where it balances, that's the average point. So in statistics, the average is right there where the weight is equally distributed across the two sides. That's one way to define a center, right? Equal weight on both sides of that point. Another way to look at the center is to think of the median. The median is the 50th percentile. And what that says is that half of all the data is below that number. And as a result, therefore, half is above the number as well. So um, a good number is, say, for example, I said the typical American family um, has a median income of 40000 a year. It would tell you that half of the families in America make less than 40000 a year, and half of the families make more than 40000 a year. It's a very useful number because you could then think about, well, if half the population earns less than 40000 a year, you could think about you know, what does 40000 a year buy, and you could you know, realize the economic situation for a full 50% of the public. All right. For the mode, that's a very easy calculation. It's the most repeated value, most repeated value or most frequent value to appear. Um, the mode has some serious limitations, but again, um, when you think of a bell curve, the mode is you know right in the same place where the mean and the median are. It's why you have the big tall bump in the middle of the bell curve, because that's where all the data is located. All right, so um, we have these three measures. Let's just discuss um, why you would choose one over the other. Um, the mean, when you do an average, you add up all the data points, so they all get a say in the calculation. And that's a very desirable trait in statistics. You know, we want to collect a sample and use the information in the sample. The fact that the mean uses every data point, it's extracting the maximum information from the sample. So this is the preferred measure of the center. If we can use the mean, we will use it. When can't we use the mean? Well, sometimes you have an extreme number in the data set, something really large that would really mess up the data set. Um, quick example, if you have, for example, salaries, say somebody makes 500000 a year, and then you have five other people that only make 20000 a year. When you add up these guys' salaries, they add, only add to 100000 a year. This 500000 a year, if you add them together total, you get 600000 a year. If we average those, there's one, two, three, four, five, six numbers. The sum is 600. Divided by 6, we get the average. So you get 100,000 per year. So let's look back now at the original data set, right? So the average is 100,000 a year, and we have these six numbers. Remember, we're supposed to find a measure of the center that represents sort of what's typical, right? What's typical, or it tells you at least where the data points are located on the number line. So let's think about this group here. Is 100,000 typical for this group? I would argue definitely not, right? This guy makes way more than 100,000 a year. He makes five times as much. And these guys down here, they were wishing they made 100,000 a year. They only make 20,000 a year. So this 100 doesn't represent anyone in this group well. It also doesn't really clearly define where this data is located on the number line. This 20 is way down there and 500 is way up there. So this number is not a great choice. So what do you do in that case? Well. A good choice is the median in those scenarios. So whenever you have an extreme number like this guy, 
mixed in with a data that's going to skew the mean and put it in a place where it probably doesn't belong, you know, the median will fix that. And the reason why is because for the median, you just put the numbers in order and you take the number that's smack in the middle. So if I put these numbers in order, there's our 520s and then we put the 500. When I put that in order, you know, the number in the middle is the number between these two, so it's 20,000 because they're both the same number. So the median is 20,000. Half of the numbers in this list are less than or equal to 20,000, half are greater than or equal to 20,000. And that, that basically um, is a better representation of the data set. You may say, well, it doesn't really represent the 500 very well at all. Well, that's true, but it certainly for sure um, you know, represents the other five out of six people in the group, right? Much better representation. And also, you can simply interpret it. Half the people make more than or equal to, and the other half, or sorry, half the people make less than or equal to, the other half make more than or equal to that number. All right, so the median is good whenever you have an extreme data value present. And lastly, we have the mode. Uh, the mode is the most repeated data value. Um, I tend to think that the mode is better used to describe data that's not numerical. So, for example, you can't talk about the average eye color or the median eye color, but if you wanted to know the most common eye color, the typical eye color that you would encounter in the world, the mode is a great way to describe that, right? The one that appears most often is the mode, the modal eye color, so to speak. So, but otherwise, it's the most repeated value, and you know, for um, some data sets like the bell curve, the mode is in a, a very respectable place along with the mean and median, it's in the exact same location, and that's because that uh, distribution it's got a perfectly symmetric bell shape. And so the mean, the median, and the mode are all in one spot. Okay. But in general, I, I don't, for me, for my uh, taste, I feel like the mean and the median are definitely preferable to the mode as a measure of the center. But it's one of the options that are available. Okay, so let's go on and just look at one last thing about this topic, and that is what symbols do we use for these guys? For the mean, the symbol that's um, used for the population is a Greek symbol, mu. And then for the sample value, we take an x and we put a bar on top. So this is the population mean, and this is the sample mean. And that'll be very important in statistics. We use these symbols all the time. For the median, Um, generally, the population value is this symbol eta, so it's the population median. Again, a Greek symbol eta to represent the median. And then for the sample value, we use x tilde, this is the sample median. Okay, so those are the symbols. And uh, for mode, uh, we won't need to worry about the symbol for that. The ones, in fact, the ones that are most commonly used in the course are going to be these symbols. You won't really use the median very much either, but this is the pair of symbols that are going to be most useful to us.